Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here, and I'm continuing with every exam question that's ever been asked on probability, and I'm now going to be focusing on multiple events where there's often a bit of problem solving, and these tend to be questions that are usually towards the end of the exam paper. Now, if you do want to use this document, it is always in the link, uh, always in the description, so you can download it and use it, and it's all fully hyperlinked. Now, some of these questions you could do with a tree diagram, but what you'll find is they begin to hold you back as the tree diagrams get bigger. So I'm going to try and show you these ways of doing it, but if you do want to do it with a tree diagram, that is absolutely fine as well. So it's a non-calculator one and it says there are nine counters in a bag, seven of them are green, two of them are blue. Rhea takes at random two counters from the bag. Work out the probability that she takes one counter of each colour and you must show your working. So when she takes the two counters she does not replace them, she does not replace them so there is no replacement for these kinds of ones. Well if she's going to take one of each colour she's either going to select a green and then a blue or a blue and then a green. So we'll just work out those probabilities. So the green would be seven over nine, and then afterwards she's gonna pick a blue one. Well, there's no longer nine counters in the bag because one of them has already gone. So it's gonna be out of eight, and the probability that it's blue would be two out of eight. Now, if we do it the other way around, we would say that there are for blue, it's two out of nine, and there's still gonna be out of eight counters here, seven of them are going to be green. So we just work out these two probabilities and then add them together. Well, that is 14 over 72. That is 14 over 72. We just need to add these. And so when we do 14 over 72 plus 14 over 72, we end up with the answer of 28 over 72. So let's see, we've got that one. Yep, there's the 28 over 72 for this part. Okay, this one says there's only red counters and blue counters in a bag. Joe takes at random a counter from the bag. The probability that the counter is red is 0 0.65, and Joe puts the counter back into the bag, so it's different from this one, from the previous one. Mary takes at random a counter from the bag. She puts the counter back into the bag. What is the probability that they take counters of different colours? So we could have red, and then I'm going to say this red with a dash means not red. Or Joe could get not red and then Mary could get red. So if we work out those probabilities, it would be 0 0.65. Not red would just be 1 minus 0 0.65, which is 0 0.35. 1 minus 0 0.65 is 0 0.35. Or you could get not red multiplied by red. And then we're just going to add these probabilities together to get the total. So I'm going to do 0 0.65 times 0 0.35 plus 0 0.35 times 0 0.65. And we get the answer 0 0.455. So a tree diagram could have helped, but I think we can try and do them without as well. It says there are 78 red counters in the bag. How many blue counters are there in the bag? Well, if the total number is going to be n, n is the total. We know that when you do the red probability, which is 0 0.65, and you multiply it by the total, we get 78. So the total number would be 78 divided by 0 0.65. Let's just quickly work that out. So we'll do 78 divided by 0 0.65. There are 120. Well, I could either do now the 0 0.35 times 120, or I could just do 120 take away 78. So if I do 120 take away 78, that will tell me how many are left, which are going to be not red or the blue ones. 120 take away 78 and we get the answer 42. So we've got 0 0.455 and then we've got 42 right here. Okay, and then we've got for the next question, it says when a biased coin is thrown four times, the probability of getting four heads is 16 out of 81. Work out the probability of getting four tails when the, co the coin is thrown four times. So if we say that the probability of getting heads on a coin, let's just call that P, okay? So if we're gonna do that four times, it would be P, you get P again, P again, P again, it's gonna to have to happen four times in a row. In other words, P to the power of four is gonna be equal to 16 over 81. So P to the power of four is 16 over 81. And to find out what P is equal to, I will do the fourth root of 16 over 81, and that will tell me the probability of getting heads on this coin here. So I will do the fourth root. So you need to know how to do this on your calculator. Let me just type this in properly. So we're gonna do the fourth root of 16 over 81. And the answer we get for that is, oh, I didn't type it in properly, which is why it's not giving me the right answer, is just gonna be two thirds. So the probability of getting heads on the coin is two thirds. We wanna work out the probability of getting four tails. So if heads has a probability of two thirds, 
then tails must have a probability of getting one third. So getting four tails, the probability would be doing a third for the first time, the second time, the third time, and the fourth time, which is obviously just a third to the power of four. This is where it kind of starts to feel like it's coming into like a level kind of stuff. So I'll just do some brackets or I'll just do my one over three. I'll do that to the power of four and we get the answer one over 81. So the probability of getting four tails in a row would be one over 81, which is the answer that we've got right here in the mark scheme. Okay, this is where things get pretty tricky because they want a lot more problem solving in these kinds of questions. It says that Marek has nine cards and there is a number on each card. Marek takes at random two of the cards. He works out the product of the numbers on the two cards. Work out that the probability, sorry, work out that the probability that the product is an even number. So I'm not really bothered about what the actual numbers are. I just want to know which ones are even and which ones are odd. So for my evens, I've got two, four, six, and eight. So I've got four out of the nine. And then for the odds, I've got one, three, five, seven, and nine. So for the odds, the probability is five out of nine. Now we need to think about all of the different ways that you could end up with the, prob the product being an even number. So we could have even times even. Let's look at all of the options. We could have odd times odd. We could have even on the first pick and odd on the second pick. And then we could have had odd on the first pick and even on the second pick. Well, even times even, that is going to give you an even number. Two times two is four. Odd times odd is going to give you an odd number because three times three, for example, gives you nine. Even times odd, that gives you an even. If you think about doing, I don't know, two times three, that gives you six. And if you did an odd times an even, say, for example, three times two that also gives you six so we want to work out the probability that the product is an even number in other words we want to work out this probability this probability this probability and add them together or alternatively we could just do one minus the probability that we get an odd answer that will be the same thing so I'm instead going to work out this one I'm going to do this odd times odd to begin with rather than doing these I think it's going to be a lot less work so for the first pick, the probability of getting an odd number is going to be 5 out of 9. Now, it doesn't say that he puts the card back. It says he takes at random two of the cards. So he takes a card and then he's taking another one. We can think of that as happening as one single event, or we can think of it as happening as two events. I think it's easier to think of it as two events, that you pick one card and then you're picking another. What that means is there's no longer going to be nine cards, there's going to be eight. And because we've already picked an odd card, there won't be five odd cards, there are going to be four odd cards. So when I work this out, five times four is 20, and nine times eight is 72. So this means this thing at the top was our probability of even. I'm going to work out the probability that we get a product of an even number. It will be one minus 20 over 72. Well, one is 72 over 72. And of course, you could just do this on the calculator, but I'm going to do 72 over 72 minus 20 over 72. And we get the answer of 50 over 72, which, of course, you could simplify it if you wanted to. Uh, but, but it's fine just to leave it like this for probability questions. So the method I did was this odd times odd. This was my odd and odd calculation that we had here. Like I said before, you could have done this, this and this, added them together. But I think this one is a quicker way of doing it. So we got the 52 over 72. For some reason, I can't even do subtraction, so we didn't get that, but we're going to change that. 72 take away 20 is 52. I hope you were sort of screaming at the video being like, what a stupid mistake. But we do have the answer of 52 over 72. Okay, so Sally plays two games against Martin. In each game, Sally could win, draw or lose. In each game they play, we've got the probability that she will win is 0 0.3 and the probability she will draw is 0 0.1 work out the probability she will win exactly one of these two games against Martin. So I'm actually only bothered about her winning one and then not winning the other one. So instead of thinking about it as win, draw and lose, I'm going to think about it as the probability that she wins and then the probability that she does not win. I think I'm going to simplify this problem. So winning is 0 0.3 and not winning is 0.7 because she's either going to lose or draw and they won't count as a win. So we're going to work out the probability that she will win exactly one of the two games against Martin. So she could either win and then not win or she could not win 
and then win. Those are the two ways of this happening. So it's going to be a 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, and the second one would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, and then we're just going to add these together. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 times by 0 0.3, and that's just going to be our final answer for this. Oh, it's an on-calculator. Okay, well, 3 times 7 is 21. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 is 0 0.21. So it's a 0 0.21. The next one's also going to be a 0 0.21. So that gives us an answer of 0 0.42. Let's see if we've got this one right. Yeah, there's the 0 0.42. And you'll see this idea of doing nothing to do with the drawing. I think actually just doing it with the winning and not winning is a simpler way of doing this one. OK, we're on another non-calculator one. There are only three red counters and five yellow counters in a bag. Jude takes at random three counters from the bag. Work out the probability he takes exactly one red counter. So if we're going to do our first bag, our second bag, and our third bag, we need to think of all of the different combinations. You could do a tree diagram. I think it's more complicated to do a tree diagram. So we're going to say that he could either get red, then yellow, then yellow, or yellow, then red, then yellow, or yellow, then yellow, then red, because he wants to take exactly one red counter. Now, to begin with, there are eight counters. So all of the probabilities at the beginning are going to be out of eight. But each time, there will be one less counter, because one of them is being removed. So to begin with, the probability that it's red will be three. There's three out of eight. Now, there's still five yellow counters, so there would be five out of seven. But in the last one, a yellow has already been picked, so it would be four out of six. It's six because two counters have already gone. We're going to have the same pattern for these ones. We're going to have eight for the first, then seven, then six, because each time a counter is being taken. Now, to begin with, there are five yellow counters. And here, there are still going to be, for this red one, there are still going to be three red counters. A yellow counter has already gone, so it won't be five anymore. It's going to be a four. And for our last one, we're still going to have it being out of eight, out of seven, and out of six. Well, for yellow, there is originally five. There's now going to be four yellows. And there are still three red counters. That hasn't changed, so it's just going to be three. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get all of these, and we're going to add them up. So we have three. I'll just do them on the They're all actually going to be the same as each other, because, look, if you've got a four, five, and a three, a four, five, and a three, a four, five, and a three. The numerator is all going to be the same thing. So we're actually going to have three lots of one of those being multiplied. So I'm going to do three, hang on a second, three eighths multiplied by five sevenths multiplied by four sixths, and you get five over 28. So there's three lots of five over 28, because hopefully what you're seeing by this is the denominators will all be the same and the numerators will also be the same. So I've got three of them in total. So I'm just going to do my answer multiplied, my answer multiplied by three, and we get the answer of 15 over 28. Now, I think this is a pretty challenging question. I think a lot of people probably would have wanted to go in and do a tree diagram for this, but I think this way is a little bit more simple. So they've said 180 out of 336. Let's double check that's the same as ours. Yep, we've got the 15 over 28, which was the answer that we had. OK, we've got a calculator one, and it's this is probably, I think, the hardest one of these ones. It says, in a village, if it rains on one day, the probability it will rain on the next day is 0 0.8. If it does not rain on one day, the probability that it will rain on the next day is 0 0.6. A weather forecaster says there is a 70% chance that it will rain in the village on Monday. Work out an estimate for the probability that it will rain in the village on Wednesday, and you must show all your working. So I think we should actually do a little bit of thinking around this bit with a tree diagram. It might help us think about what's going on, but we won't be doing a big tree diagram for this one. So it says if it rains on one day, then the probability it rains on the next day is going to be 0.8 meaning that it would not rain, there's my r dash, would be 0 0.2. If it does not rain on one day, the probability it will rain on the next day is 0 0.6. So the probability it would not rain on the next day would be 0 0.4 that we've got there. So we're going to try and now use this fact 
to think about what would happen between Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So we're going to have Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So to begin with, it could rain on Monday, it could rain on Tuesday. The thing I'm interested in is just in the fact that it's going to rain on Wednesday. It could rain on Monday, not rain on Tuesday and still rain on Wednesday. It could not rain on Monday, it could rain on Tuesday and it could still rain on Wednesday. Or it could not, main, not rain on Monday, not rain on Tuesday, but it could still rain on Wednesday. So we're going to try and calculate these probabilities of all three things and this tree diagram might help us work out what's going to go on. So for Monday it says there's a 70% chance that it will rain, so there's going to be a 30% chance that it will not rain. But I want it to rain on Monday, so I'm going to say that it's going to be 0 0.7. Now on Tuesday the probability that it will rain, given that it has already rained on Monday, is going to be a 0.8. And then for it to rain on Wednesday, well, it's rained on Tuesday. That means that there is a 0.8, a 0.8 uh, probability that it's going to rain on Wednesday. So raining on Monday, we've said is 70%. But now it's a day where it's rained. We want to find out what's the probability that it won't rain. So it has rained. The probability it won't rain is 0.2. And now for Wednesday, the day before hasn't rained. So we're down on this part. We want to find out what's the probability that it's going to rain. And that's going to be 0.6. Now I don't want it to rain on Monday, so there's a 30% chance it won't rain on Monday, but we want it to rain on Tuesday. So the day before was not a rain. We want to say, because this is Monday, on Tuesday it would be 0.6. But it's rained on Tuesday now, so we're looking at this top branch. We want to think what's the probability it will rain on Wednesday, and that is going to be 0.8. Now I don't want it to rain on Monday, so it's going to be a 0.3, and I don't want it to rain on Tuesday. So if it hasn't rained on Monday, then it's not going to rain on Tuesday it will be a probability of 0.4. Now for Wednesday, it's a day when it didn't rain the day before, but we want it to rain on Wednesday. It is going to be 0.6. So I'm going to work out all of these things and I'm going to add them together. So I'm going to do, I'm going to total or add these, total these probabilities. Okay, so I'm going to do this all on my calculator and then hope we end up with what they've got because I think this one is really hard. So we've got 0 0.7 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.7 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.3 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 and the answer that we get is 187 out of 250 or 0 0.74. Eight, a really challenging question. I think lots of people in A-level would find this difficult as well. So this little bit of the diagram can help you, but it's the fact there's three events here. It would be very, very big tree diagram if you wanted to draw this. So we did thankfully get the 0 0.748, and I'm not sure there's any other ways we can... I think my example of going through it hopefully will be a bit clearer than looking at the mark scheme. Okay, so that's everything about what I call multiple events. The next set of videos is going to be things that are with algebra. So like I said, you could do some of this with a tree diagram. I think it kind of works well without. If you found this video helpful, please do drop it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel and checking out the other things that I've got on there as well. There might be some things that you would find useful for your revision.